God's children, Peo Maraquit, were denied drinking water. God's children in El Geo Maraquit were denied water for farming, for growing food, so that God's children don't go hungry. Of course, I'm referring to President Huru Kenyatta's remarks during Sagana 3. You see, there's one very important factor that comes into play, especially during this electioneering period, that too many Kenyans are not aware of. Or they forget. I'm talking about emotions. Drumming up emotions amongst voters. It's very important if you want to win a general election. Let me put it this way. You cannot win any general election anywhere on the face of the earth without drumming up the emotions of your voters. Yeah, or prospective voters. Well, there are some exceptions. For instance, if enough negative emotions yeah, are generated towards your opponent, your main opponent, you can win an election. Yeah. Bottom line, it is all about emotions. You need the people, your prospective voters, to be as emotional as possible so that they'll take the trouble even after cheering you during meetings, during your rallies, so that they'll take the trouble to wake up very early in the morning, line up for long hours to cast a vote for you, so that they'll postpone yeah, the urgent thing they had to do, or the urgent thing that came up on election day. Yeah, they postpone it. Even if they're going to collect money, the emotions overwhelm them and they say, I must go to the polling station to cast my vote for so and so. Come what may, lazima ni pige kura. Oh yes, emotions are critical. You know, during this electioneering period, many people don't understand why we get so many hate speech. Yeah, manenos, hate speech complaints. It comes to the territory and the season. Yeah, I think now you understand that better, if you didn't already know. Now, these children of El Geo Maraquet, <laughs> there's a problem. Yeah, there's a huge problem that the deputy president's camp has. And that problem is that as we go into the elections, more and more emotions... Yeah, that will not favor the cause of the deputy president to be the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya will come up. Let's not even talk about Kiamba. Very emotional story. Yeah, this happened during the 2007 clashes after those elections where some poor Kenyans were trapped inside a church and deliberately burnt to ashes, including women and children. I guarantee you that story will come up. As we head towards the elections, yeah, I suspect very close to the elections, that story will come up. And it's all about drumming emotions. It's part of the political game. But the huge problem the deputy president has, yeah, let me put it this way, you cannot go into a general election wanting to be elected the president of a country and you have too many skeletons in your closet. That will definitely be a huge disadvantage as we are going to see shortly in Kenyan politics, if you don't believe me. Because already, even if you have few skeletons, that is a cause for concern. But when you have many, Muteshi's land, land grabbing, embezzled funds, appeared in court, charged with fraud, and the list is endless. When you have all those skeletons in your closet, seriously, how do you expect 
to mount a serious bid for the presidency. If you are a William Samoy Ruto supporter, please answer that question in the comments area below. Tell me how. Because I have no idea how you can actually pull that one off. Unless you have voters who are robots. They don't think. They don't have any emotions. And because politics is a very competitive game. Yeah, for those who want to call it a game. It's not really a game. It's a very serious thing. But because it is very competitive. What do you think your opponents are going to do? When you have so many skeletons. Do you think they are going to ignore them? Do you think they are going to decide, no, this is not fair, let's play fair, let's ignore, yeah, let's not drum up the emotions of the voters. Do you think that's what your opponents are going to do? <laughs> My friend, this is politics. Politics is already a dirty game. Yeah. And therefore these children in El Gayo Maraquet that were denied water and they were denied food because that dam would have been able to produce water which would have made less children go hungry. God's children. <laughs> you know in my previous video I said that the president prepared thoroughly for Sagana 3. And some people didn't believe me. Yes, he talked off the cuff. He didn't read from anywhere. But make no mistake about it. The president's words were chosen very carefully. Now, a few moments ago, I took in a show yeah, featuring some uh, church people. And they were criticizing the president. Yeah. And the way they were talking, you can be sure that they are convinced that the president talked carelessly at Sagana. He just got angry and he talked. And there are many Kenyans who believe that. Yeah. But God's children in El Geo Maraquet. He. God's children in El Geo Maraquet. Somebody put money in their pocket and denied God's children in El Geo Maraquet. Basic human rights. Think about it for a minute. There are so many other ways in which the president would have put this, this issue, you know, where he was accusing his own deputy of corruption. But those choice of words are designed to generate, provoke, trigger a lot of emotions. Yeah. And it is not surprising that the church is on the defensive. The church people I was listening to a few moments ago were very defensive. They were saying there is no way the church can be able to tell if the money that is being brought to them is from the proceeds of crime, is from corruption, yeah, which are economic crimes, more serious than theft, by the way. Yeah. But that is being hypocritical according to me. Because those church people live in the country called Kenya. They know what happens in Kenya. They know who William Samoy Ruto was just a few years ago. And they know that he suddenly became very wealthy. Very suddenly. Yeah, and they know people don't just become suddenly wealthy. How long did it take Bill Gates to be rich? How long did it take Warren Buffett, the famous American investor, to get rich? Yeah. They know. And therefore giving an excuse and saying, oh, the church does not have the mechanism. <laughs> that is being defensive. In my opinion, the church of the Almighty God needs to be careful because people look up to the church people set their standards after they look at the church after they listen to their pastor and so 
by taking money from somebody whom it is just suspected. Yeah, forget evidence, forget the president telling us, and the president is a very well informed Kenyan. Yeah. It is highly unlikely that he'll tell us lies. Yeah. Because he gave us a lot of details. He gave us the name of the project. He gave us the exact amount. Yeah. But that aside, even somebody who is just suspected of crime, a church of Almighty God, a genuine church, should never accept money from such an individual. And that's my opinion. I'm sure many of us have different opinions. But that is my opinion. Anyway, the super interesting development here is that we have at least one church that has now refunded the money donated to them by the deputy president. And remember, this is the electioneering period. You know, during the electioneering period, part of a campaign strategy is to take advantage of a situation. Yeah. So it would not surprise me if somebody came up and told me that some of these churches have been approached and offered a deal to return the deputy president's money for perception purposes. Yeah, to create a kind of wave where the deputy president's money is being refunded, which would ultimately have a very negative impact on his campaign. Yeah, I'm not saying that is what is happening, but it would not surprise me if that is what is happening. You do not go into an election with too many skeletons in your closet. You won't make it. Your opponents will have you for lunch. Your opponents will have you for supper and breakfast. Zote pamoja. <laughs> this is not a game. Some call it a game. But politics is not a game. <laughs> People want to win at all costs. Yeah, because in politics, there is no honorable runner-up. There is no, you did very well. You came in third. Wow. Without any budget. There is nothing like that. In politics, the winner takes it all. Period. Nobody will remember who was second. Nobody gives a hoot who was third and fourth without any campaign funds. That is irrelevant. The winner. And only the winner takes it all. And therefore people will do anything to win an election. Anything. And if you give them something on a silver platter, like too many skeletons in your closet, what do you expect? Now in my view, the pressure on the deputy president has just started. I believe it is going to build up very fast gradually but pretty fast and in two or three months time it will become increasingly difficult for the deputy president to campaign because there will be very negative feelings very negative vibes towards the deputy president I believe God's children in El Geo Maraquet is just the beginning in fact, it is just the warm-up. Bado ajanza. When they just get started. Yeah. <laughs> it will be very difficult. Now, there's also a danger here. Because sometimes in politics, you can do something that makes somebody so desperate that they decide to sink into desperate measures which end up creating chaos. That is the danger I see going forward. Especially considering the character of some certain presidential candidates. You know the character of a person never changes. What is deep inside them will usually come out very clearly in a desperate situation, you know, where they've been cornered. When they're comfortable, 
They can pretend to be anybody. They can pretend to be Mr. Nice Guy. They can succeed in looking like sheep when they're actually wolves. But when they're cornered, things change. Now, the deputy president has also been an expert in drumming up the emotions of the people. He did it very well in his anti-BBI campaign. He got many Kenyans hating the BBI for nothing, for no reason, without even understanding what it really was. Actually, the deputy president is a guru at drumming up emotions, which is a very strong point for any politician. However, you know also the deputy president was successful in selling the hustler versus dynasty narrative, which is of course very emotional. As the poor against those who are rich, it was very effective. Until something called Kenya Kwanza came along, which includes people like Musalia Mdavadi. Musalia Mdavadi is not a hustler. It included people like Moses Wetangula. Moses Wetangula is not a hustler. These are people from privileged backgrounds. Musalia Mdavadi is from a dynasty. And that's why you'll notice the deputy president's team has been downplaying, yeah, not using the dynasty versus hustler narrative often enough. Anyway, in my view, that was a very smart move by the deputy president's camp. They created something out of virtually nothing. Yeah. And they were successful. He did well. However, there's a problem. How many things will he be able to create out of nothing? To drum up enough emotion. Yeah, to turn the tide that is now against him. Especially when he himself has got so many skeletons in his closet. Just waiting to be taken advantage of by his political opponents. (laughs) In my view, that is yet another reason why I believe, like many analysts, that Sagana 3 was the beginning of the end of William Samuel Ruto and his bid for the presidency in this year 2022. Now, I appreciate the fact that today I've gone a little deeper in my analysis. Yeah, but I hope I've not lost anybody. Yeah, I hope everybody is very clear as to what I'm trying to say. Yeah, because it is important going forward. It is important to understand, especially in view of what is about to unfold shortly. Yeah, or the events which are about to unfold shortly. Let me just leave it at that. Because when you really think about it, emotions are used everywhere. Even in marketing campaigns, the most successful marketing campaigns drum up the emotions of prospects, possible buyers of your product or service. Emotions are key. And in politics, they are critical. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Oh,